On this episode of the John 1911 Podcast, deer season blows in like a hurricane, a Valmay rifle with $350 magazines, a major range improvement update, and chic money bags. Okay, good afternoon everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 79 of the John 1911 Podcast. How are you recovering from your, uh, your windy hunt, Freeze? Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, it's been just a busy couple of days with, you know, Thanksgiving and, you know, and being out of town last weekend. It's just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm buried and busy right now. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, everybody's been, you know, lots going on and been busy and, you know, I mean, we just, we were supposed to have this podcast this morning, but then you couldn't make it. So then I was like, well, I'll do an armory chat, did an armory chat. And you're like, Hey, let's do the podcast. So I had to wrap up the armory chat and jump off and <laughs> come back onto here. And I sound like a madman. So, um, yeah, well, it's trying to get all this squeezed in. Yeah. You know, uh, so, so, all right, waiting for this list to repopulate. Tell me about, okay. I posted, the pictures you sent from the hayfield with the K31, um, yeah. that's up. I posted the pictures from the deer that were harvested, at least opening day, the few, um, on the comments section of John 1911. Did you did you get a chance to look at that? I know she haven't been on there in probably a week. Um, no, I, I, I haven't. Uh, actually, let me go take a look at it now. Um, yeah, it's it's just been crazy. I've been kind of dark you know, online, it's, I just haven't had the time, you know, it's, it's been just nuts. No, I understand. Um, Especially with deer season. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'll tell you what though, whew, deer season was rough. So, okay. All right. Let me, let me, cause we have people that listen to the podcast that don't really follow the website or the Facebook page that closely. Okay. I got a text message from you Saturday. I don't know if it was late morning or early afternoon, and you're like, it's windy as hell out here. Like, three trees have fallen. It's actually dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't go to my deer stand because, I mean, the wind was at a constant, oh, it was easy, 20 miles per hour, and that was constant. And then you would get, like, 40, 50, 60 mile an hour wind gusts. It was crazy. In the woods, it's, it literally sounded like airplanes were flying at treetop level. We didn't get that much and, wind here. Oh, uh, it was it was nuts. So I went out and I hunted over a hayfield um, opening morning, and you know didn't see yeah. nothing. And um, about mid morning, I um, thought, well, you know, Mitchell Range has always been a honey hole. And we've got structure. Uh, we've got, you know, a bench to shoot off of. Plus, we've got distances marked. You know, it's kind of almost like a, you know, a cheater, a cheater hole for deer, mm-hmm. you know. So I thought, well, you know, I'll go over to Mitchell Range. Well, Mitchell Range is a wreck. Um, they're logging the farm. You know that. Um, they're, you they're, told me that it was... They're they're taking a couple hundred trees off the farm, you know, walnuts and uh, pines and stuff like that. And the hill going down past Mitchell Range is where the logging machines have gone up and down. And that thing is just a muddy mess. Um, That's probably the least steep hill for them to cross over to the other side of the farm, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. So, well, and it's clear. Did they, did they run, have they, they haven't actually run over the Mitchell Cemetery, have they? No, 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 no. Okay. That's definitely off limits. Okay. Um, and so anyway, I go down there and uh, man, I mean, there were wind gusts were blowing, uh, trees were falling. It was, you know, all those ash trees, you know, the uh, ash borers have basically killed all the ash trees in those area, you know, mm. in, in that area. I didn't and, think about that. That's and, right. Uh, and all these ash trees that are standing dead, man, I mean, oh. started blowing over. And I mean, you know, 50, 60 mile an hour wind gust, you know. And yeah. here's the thing. There's some 
big ass trees. Oh yeah. We're oh, not talking yeah. like an ash tree you have in your subdivision <laughs> that you know some builder put in ten years ago. These some of these trees uh, on the farm are, I mean, these things would crush. Dude, they they they'd crush oh, a dump some, truck. Some of these trees are over a hundred feet tall. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're they're tall trees, and um, and I mean, yeah, and I mean, nothing. This is the first opening day. In, oh man, 25 years maybe? Yeah. That not a single deer was shot opening day. And, and you know, usually on opening day, whether you shoot a deer or not, you know, you hear shooting going on all around you. I bet I didn't hear 10, 10 shots go off the whole day. Wow. It was bad. I didn't see turkey. I didn't see squirrel. Um, other than a few buzzards and hawks flying around, I didn't even see any birds. I mean, wow. it was it was bad. I did not know. See, because I, you know, we were on the lookout for the wind, and I was like, "Man, he's going to be out there." And it didn't get that windy here, so you know, I was like, I didn't think it. I did not know it got to be sixty degrees, but you're six sixty mile an hour winds. But you know what? That makes up. That brings up a good point. I didn't think about this when I was out yesterday cutting lanes on the new rifle range, thousand yard range, driving in, like you're driving in the area. There were some, like, there was, like, a piece of, like, a, a tin roof that was in a tree that I didn't remember being there before. Like, I had seen a couple of things, and I was like, oh, man, you know, that must have happened from a storm. And I didn't realize it happened this past weekend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, these were, like, um, I mean, these were pretty, pretty yeah. hard winds. See, we didn't um, get that here. Yeah, and um, Sunday... Um, well, and then, uh, around one thirty, two o'clock, the rain came in and it was, it wasn't just drizzly rain. It was like full down force thunderstorm rain. <laughs> we didn't get and that it, here either. So, so, <laughs> so basically, um, by two o'clock, everyone was done hunting. Not done. that it mattered. Not, not, not that it mattered. I mean, no one saw anything anyway. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? So, that explains what I was out cutting yesterday. There was standing water in the hay field that's up high at the yeah, top of this hill. And I was like, man, why is there water out here? That's because it was torrential rainfall <laughs> Saturday. Dude, I mean, it was, it was, man, it was bad. I mean, okay. it was just, it was, it was bad, bad, horrible. Worst opening day I think I've ever gone through. <laughs> and I've been hunting it's like for, a Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> you know, I've been I've been I've been deer hunting for thirty five years, thirty six years, something like that. <laughs> you know, wow. Um, yeah, it was horrible. And then Sunday, <clears throat> um, Sunday wasn't much better. I mean, it wasn't as windy. It wasn't raining. Uh, it wasn't near as cold as it should have been. Um, didn't really. I saw a couple doe come by but you know they were small and they weren't worth shooting and um uh, there were only two deer taken sunday both both bucks you that, know those are the pictures that you that we posted yeah um, okay uh, yeah so uh you know so i mean it wasn't a totally skunked weekend i mean at least there were two deer shot <laughs> you know so at what range did the uh, son-in-law shoot his buck? Was it one of those his? Yeah, um, yeah, he um, uh, about thirty yards, maybe. Okay, he, uh, he uses a forty-four mag lever gun, right? The Marlin. Yeah, he uses yeah. Uh, what? What is it? An eighteen ninety-four, eighteen ninety-five, whatever, whichever one has the uh, the handgun rounds, opposed yeah, to yeah, I, right. I can't remember either. I should because we have but, one, but whatever. Yeah, but so, uh, hey, so. how how far is how far is uh, Harrison County from from Mitchell's Range? Where's Harrison County in Indiana? Shit, I don't even know where. I've never heard of Harrison County, Indiana. Okay, because we had a. We had a um, – um, uh, hold on. Let me find it. We had a uh, one of our regulars. He sent us a story 
Harrison County, Indiana. Indiana conservation officers are investigating after a man was found shot to death during a weekend deer hunting accident or incident. They said incident. It was like, oh, yeah, it was like, uh oh, what's this? So uh-huh. according to the, uh, to the DNR, Thomas Zimmerman, 58, Borden, Thomas. Okay, I don't know why there's an extra word in there. So it says Thomas Zimmerman, comma, 58, comma, Borden. I don't know what that means. Was hunting uh-huh. a private property in southern Harrison County near Elizabeth. Where's Elizabeth, Indiana? Shit, I don't know. Okay, here's the thing. Uh-huh. Around 6.40 p.m., why are you even here? No, around 6.40 p.m., <laughs> a member of Zimmerman's hunting group found him unresponsive. Investigators said he was in an elevated ladder-type tree stand. Officers had to use a rope and pulley system to lower Zimmerman to the ground. He died from a qu- close-range gunshot wound to the head. Investigators said no foul play is suspected. Toxicology and other tests are pending. So, you know what happened here, right? <clears throat> He's uh, probably either crawling up into his stand with a loaded gun, not using the rope, or using the rope with a loaded gun, and you're not supposed to use a loaded gun, and he shot himself in the head. Well. Unless he decided to commit suicide in nature. In a tree I stand. Mean, I mean, could be. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. You know, people, um, people think people think that that people don't know what I'm talking about. The whole there's a trick which you do. I don't I don't know if it's I don't I don't know where it comes from. We've always done it, but I mean I don't I don't know if this is like common knowledge or not. But you know, you hang a line down, you climb up your tree stand, you clip your gun into your down at the bottom of the line, you climb up, and then you you know string yeah. your your gun up, barrel down, butt up. You yeah. never pull your gun up, barrel up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because yeah. if you pull your gun up, barrel up, and the safety's not on, and the trigger, you know, and a branch hits the trigger, then and, yeah. you're blowing and it's the loaded. Rack. Yeah, so yeah, so you 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 know, we all I use a five fifty paracord with a with a little dog clip on the end of it, or either a a, a carbiner, and uh, loop it around my gun, you know, through the sling, you know, pull it up by the sling, and yeah. uh. And barrel down, butt up, and, you know, that way, you know, you're safe. Yeah, I, you know, it, I I usually just, you know, sling across my back. But, you know, it depends the situation where I'm going, how the tree stand is. Like, look, if the tree stand has one of those, and for some reason, like, maybe I'm real limited in my movement up there, I just may go ahead and just string it up. And that's what I call it, but. You know, I mean, apparently, I mean, I don't know if this guy did it. Str- I'm assuming the string up, but this is being this story out of Harrison County, Indiana, is being reported as an accident, and that's the only accident I've heard. I think so far this season, but you know, I mean, well, you know, let me let me um, let me just say that there is a slim possibility that he was sitting in his deer stand, and depending on the lay of the land. Someone was using, you know, a uh, 243 on the next farm and just by the just by sheer weirdness, you know, dude got got hit in the head. I mean, that's I'll tell you what, um, well, the way the way the story's written, it says close range gunshot. So they're pretty sure if you're close range, like the barrels within, I mean, within two feet of, of the, you know, there's so much outgassing and you know you can tell very quickly it wasn't around from the next hill okay you know the damage to the the the, the wound and the nature of the wound um yeah. then you, but you're absolutely right that's part of the reason why on on opening day you know we got this new farm that we're putting a thousand yard range on and the per- person we bought it from is like ain't no one hunted this farm in 12 years and i'm like bullshit, bullshit. you know uh-huh. and that may very well be true but you know as well as I do that somebody's crawling into the back of that farm, and I'm I'm back there, you know, either shooting guns or dropping trees and clearing shooting lanes, and we run across each other, and it could get ugly, especially if well, we yeah. run across each other bullet first. Yeah, so I just I decided mean, to stay away. No one may may have had permission to hunt that farm in twelve years, but that doesn't mean people don't sneak on. Yeah. You know. Um, 
uh, you know, I, my stand, my primary stand is 100 yards from the uh, property line on the farm we hunt on. And um, I've been in my stand on opening day before, you know, and heard people on the next farm shoot. And, the, you know, and this is back, you know, we're hunting shotgun. And you could hear, um, you know, <laughs> the slug <laughs> Going through the going through the going leaves. through the grass and yeah. leaves on the ground by, past my stand, and I'm telling you what, you want to talk about a pucker factor? It's like, man, uh, can I get skinnier than this tree real freaking quick? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, dang. And I mean, I've I've, I, yeah, I've had that happen. Yeah. See, the thing is, Indiana just switched a, like a year or two ago from shotgun to some centerfire rifle calibers. And so yeah. that's why, like, for example, you're using some of the guns you use this year because you've hunted, you're a shotgun hunter. You've shot 99.999% of every deer you've ever shot has either been with a crossbow or archery, archery or a shotgun. Yeah, I mean, uh, I did, I mean, I've shot a few deer in Michigan and I've shot a de- few deer in, um, in Kentucky with a rifle, but I Probably, I probably haven't shot more than five or six deer with a rifle. I mean, it's either been handgun, shotgun, or bow. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about handgun, but yeah, I guess, yeah, because handgun and a, yeah, because that that would make sense. All right. Let me, um, let me bring you up to date to kind of where we're at with the, uh, with the thousand yard range. Um, are you there? Yeah, I'm okay. Here. All right. When you hit mute, I can tell. <laughs> it sounds like you're like disconnected. Um, no. Okay. When uh, so, you know, we've got the um, you know, the briar patch, which is the main shooting position. We've got the hundred yards set up. I don't have the fifty. We've got the two hundred yards set up. The two hundred yard, yeah, because we're trying to clear, trying to clear a hill. Maybe more like two hundred six, so we may have to make some adjustments. Um, and I could either yeah, just raise it higher with higher posts and do all that. But, uh, yeah, but that that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's it's not. But you know, just to basically, I mean, here's the thing: whether I move something five yards one way or another in the long term, it's still establishing the impact zone, which yes. is the important thing. So, um, what I'm going to do is, I was, you know, you you have to because you're not there and you're not that familiar with the property. You come down from the briar patch, cross the creek, 100-yard target, go up the first little hill. Yeah. And then you can go down into a valley. And if I have this right, let's see. I can't remember if there's two hills or three hills. You go down to a valley. You can turn into 360 range. Yeah. Or you can go up another big hill. The 200-yard target is just past or a little bit past that turn down to the 360. Okay. Now yeah. up the big hill up into the work area, that's a yeah. huge hill. I mean, that hill grades well beyond like the natural curve of the hill. I'm probably mm-hmm. going to put a steel. I'm going to sneak a steel target in. I'm going to put it real low to the ground because we'll be able to see it because you can see it from the shooting position. Yeah. But I'm going to put it in right next to the fence next to some bushes. But I don't yeah. want to put it I can put it up I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it as high as I can because the thing is it'll I don't know how how long it'll be. But I mean, if we back out into the hayfield, it's a three hundred yard shot. But here's the thing. It's one thing taking a three hundred yard shot with like a, a really accurate precision rifle and you know you're you know, you're off five inches trying to hit the target versus say maybe taking a shot with a Ross rifle and you're high four feet, and you sent the round over the top of the hill. So instead of, I'm, I'm basically, I was kind of looking at it for a while, and I'm like, well, I want to make this mill SERP friendly. So I'm instead of taking it as far back as I could, I'm going to bring it down, and I'll put that in probably. That may go in Friday. It'll go. In, it'll go in. Hopefully, go in before by Sunday. Um, that that target will go in, but that target yeah. is not there. I ended up going down into the 360 range, and because the 360 range, as you proceed back, there's an old trail that goes as you're pushing forward, 
And that's going to be a trail that we can hit the main impact area, eventually work our way back to the thousand yard impact area. Well, I was like, fuck it. Yeah. I need to, I need to goddamn, I need to get back in here and start really exploring some of this because there's some trees that had fallen that you can't even get tractors and stuff because you can't get over these logs. So I spent basically <clears throat> six yeah. hours just clearing from the 360 range edge pushed back to where we have kind of like, um, I think the target's about 250 yards from the um, from the main shooting position, which isn't that far, um, obviously. But it's um, you know it's usable and it, it really sets us up to push farther back down. Because here's the thing: this it turns into a hole and it becomes the black hole that'll eat bullets. You could fire a howitzer down that hole and not worry about where it's going to go. So you know, while yeah. it was a lot of work for 250, it's investment in the future. Now, I hadn't told you this one. I think on December 18th, I have to look at my schedule. You know, we have some people that we're letting, that we're letting you know, do some four-wheeler stuff on the property. We work out a deal with them. They want to come. Yeah. They want to come, and we're going to have a mini chainsaw party um, on the 18th, him and I. And we're going to go back past the primitives area, to the valley overlooking the thousand yard impact zone and we're going to basically take our four wheelers and chainsaws and we're just going to try to hillbilly cut as far as we can get through to see if we can't come out as close as we can to the 360 range in a day at the back of the 360 range where i started coming in with the 250 so that will be a major that'll be the big that'll be like the golden spike you know the railroad across the country when they put <laughs> that'll literally connect the, every, the the two points of the property, and we'll be able to branch out from that and put in targets and trails yeah. for the four wheelers. So it'll be it's you know kind of there's a kind of like a, there's a process going on here, but it it's going to pay off. But you know we're uh we well, probably we have three hundred yeah, yard I mean, we have three hundred yard range right now. Yeah, well, and, and, and that's the thing. It's a process. I mean, we knew we weren't going to sit there and get, you know, a thousand yard range, you know, uh, you know, a week after the uh, land was bought. You know, I mean, yeah. we knew that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a process. Hell, the truth is having 300 yards right now is phenomenal. Oh, fuck yeah. 300 yards. Yeah. Here's the thing. We have steel targets at a, we're, we're, I'll probably set one up at 50. Because I'll have to order some more. We have a steel target at 50, a target stand at 50. We have a steel target at 100, a target stand at 100. We have a steel target at 200. We have a steel target at 250. And we'll have a steel target at 300 if you back up. But from the main shooting position, it might be, I don't know, 175, 180. So, you know, you we've got, basically, we got a lot of targets from, a hun- from 50 to, like, 300 you know what i mean that you can practice yeah all the way through there so oh yeah and 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 that's that's honestly that's that's phenomenal there's actually a, a lot of a lot of uh uh you know uh ranges around here <clears throat> that don't have that oh fuck yeah especially with steel you know we can shoot 50 bmg yeah. on if we want now this kind of this was kind of funny because this is where you know you're obviously like Grizzly Adams and I'm like not, <laughs> so I'm back there at the 200 yard range yesterday, and I'm looking at like the road and like some fence signs. Honestly, I'm kind of looking around the property looking for poacher signs because I know I just want to see what's going. on. I'm looking for guts, you know, maybe a deer ran on the property looking for stuff. I didn't go back to the primitives. I spent way too much time up front, but. You know, I was kind of looking and exploring and looking for deer stands and just hides and just to see what I could find. And I found this monster trail coming over a fence. And I was like, them motherfuckers hopping over this fence. And I sent it to you and you're like, that looks like a deer trail, dude. I'm like, Jesus, it's like the it's like the deer super highway. Well, I will be <laughs> I will be goddamned if I didn't find another one. So let me tell you why this is important to the listeners if they want to know about how charmed of a life we live. We will have a position, a shooting position, you know, where we have benches and trees and we're covered and it's easy to get to. We have a 200-yard target that we're going to have zero for for every gun from like a shotgun to like a howitzer, okay? And there's two major deer paths 
that go right in front and right behind that 200-yard target. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to have a big window to see the deer walk through there because they're in there because it's a low spot. They can move without being seen much. But, dude, you keep your eyes on that in the future, that could be like the freaking kill zone. Y'all, no doubt. <laughs> dude, you, you could be at the shooting position with a radio and Cheetos Dude, we're, 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 we're at the briar patch drinking coffee, smoking cigars, you know, having, you know, pole dancers, you know, strippers pole dancing around the trees, and we're shooting deer at 200 yards. Okay, maybe not the strippers, but you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's just like, Jesus, this is going to be just – and I found a lot more – now that the, uh, the a lot of the leaves have fallen, I kind of was walking – like as you go up from the 200 yard target, there's a hill to the left, and that I can get into that hill and get onto that hill, and I could place targets. But there's a lot of deer trail and deer sign. It's really interesting. Um, I haven't seen. I'm still looking for. I'm still looking for coyotes, though. I haven't seen any real coyotes yet. But I, I got close to an area where I thought there could be some, but you know they either hunkered down didn't come out. But you know, well, oh, you 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 know you you don't you don't walk up on coyote. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Like they're dead <laughs> you know, or something. You, you don't. Yeah. You don't. Um, and the thing is, you could probably walk by their den and not even know it's their den. Um, it, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we'll set up in the shooting position. We've got those animal calls, and mm-hmm. we'll do we'll do some coyote calling for the entire oh, yeah. area. Oh yeah, you know, yeah we, we'll, we can put a sign we'll, up. Coyotes come in, but they don't come out. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll call in. We'll call in some turkey. We'll call in some coyote. We'll you know we'll we'll it'll be it'll be fine. Yeah. So, <laughs> and hey, I mean the thing is, you can sit at the briar patch and just whack them. Oh God, yeah, it'll be awesome. So you know, we're working on that. Um, I guess we can talk about this now on the podcast. Um, because I just did an armory chat on it. I, I told people this on the armory chat. It was like, here's the, here's how the conversation went with Freeze. Hey, Freeze, I hate AKs, but I'm thinking about getting one just as a reference gun in the armory. He's like, okay. Hey, I'm thinking about maybe getting a Valme AK as one of those reference guns for the armory. He's like, you have my attention. And then I'm like, hey, I think I'll get one of those 223 Valme AKs. And you're like, fuck me, that piece of shit. <laughs> 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 you were mad. <laughs> it, it, it went from having my attention to I don't really fucking care about this gun. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's like, I know. I you know you didn't get two, but I could just tell you kind of held it. I, in. I, I didn't. I, I I didn't get nasty with you, but it was just like whatever. You know what? Here's the thing. Will I ever shoot that bow, mate? No. Oh God! Come on, please. You'll be at a goddamn range. You'll shoot that gun. You won't check it out of the armory, but if you're with me, you'll shoot it. I might shoot a couple rounds through it if you have it with you, but I'll never check it out of the armory, and I'll never run it. Mikey doesn't like it. Mikey doesn't like anything. No, know. I like a lot of things, and I like AKs. I just don't like Bow Maze in two twenty three <laughs> with with three hundred and fifty dollar magazines. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, there's a guy on Gunbroker. He wants 350 bucks for a Valmay 30 round magazine, and that guy smokes crack. I know. I'm, I mean, seriously. Look, okay, I know Valmay mags are stupid expensive. They're two to two fifty a piece. That's the going rate. I think it's crazy stupid because for mags that are so rare, there's an awful goddamn lot of them out there for sale. That's but, you a know, good point. They're not like you, you know, can't find them. Exactly. You know. But with that being said, that's the going rate. But then when someone wants to like pimp you for three, three fifty, it's like fuck you, you crackhead. Yeah, you, you know, know. I mean, look, I'm obviously not an AK expert, and I'm not a Valme expert, and I'm going to go ahead and say this. You know, I I guess the Valme two twenty three gun wasn't ever really, it wasn't adopted by the Finnish military. It was like gun they made for export. And, you know, to try to increase their market penetration around the world. And if, as I recall off the top of my head, you know, they may have gotten sales to Qatar or Gut Cutter, maybe like Indonesia or Cambodia. Like there's like three countries that bought these guns. Well, here's the thing. These guns are still in service. And eventually these guns are going to come out of service. And there's a good chance at some point in our lifetime that a, that, you know, a Valme, 
a flood of Valme magazines is going to come in from like you know Indonesia or some shit. And oh, I mean that, that's very, very possible, and it's actually probably likely. Yeah, you know, yeah, and the may, only, yeah, the maybe only reason, parts kits or something too. Look, the truth is the only the only reason no one's bothered to scrounge up some uh, two twenty three Valme mags from Indonesia and bring them in is because the gun's just not really that popular or prevalent here in the United States. There's not just that. There's just about really not that. There's not enough of them to make it worthwhile. That's why, yeah, that's why Magpul does it because it would be seventy five grand just to make the mold. I mean, you know, for a plastic one. So I mean, or maybe two because you need one for each side. Um, yeah. You know, look, I look at the Valme kind of like I look at the Breda AR seventy. You know, we've got one brand new mag and we've got a couple factory. We have like three factory or two factory. We have we have three or maybe four AR seventy mags in total, and it's like. How many do I goddamn need? I mean, yeah, look, you know, actually, actually, don't we have more than that? I thought we had like, didn't we get a deal? No, you're, on thinking, those mags? you're thinking about the Sig five five one. Oh, okay, we have, that's right. Because we, we have we, like ten, ten or twelve mags. Oh, for that. Uh, we have like I think it's ten magazines for the five five one. We've got thirties. Okay. We've got like like five so, and ten rounders or yeah, something. Yeah, okay. yeah, we've got a pile okay. of them. Ah, so, shit, I can't keep them all straight. Well, you know, once we <laughs> once we kind of get more, you know, because that's why we're building this new range so we can shoot videos of this stuff. So yeah. anyway, you know, so we have a Valme and, you know, so if anybody out there is sitting on some Valme magazines and would like to sell them to us at market value, I um, could be interested in a couple. Um, and if market value is three or three hundred and fifty dollars, you're smoking crack. Don't email us. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, <laughs> two two fifty. You know, hey, come look, on. two two fifty. Like I said, it's stupid money. I hate to spend it, but that is the going rate for a Valme mag. And as much as I hate it, you know, it's what you got to spend to get them. And and I don't mind spending fair market value. But when these douche nozzles are out there, you know, trying to crank people for three, three fifty, thinking, well, you know what? I don't have to sell it, but some, some idiot out there will give it to me. Well, that idiot's not me. Yeah. You know, it's because you made a good point for a magazine that's supposedly so rare. And I get that they're not as rare as a Warsaw pack magazine. They, oh, man, I mean, you if know. you need one, you can find one. Hell, you know, I tell you what. VZ-58 mags are kind of rare as far as, like, AK-style mags go. They're a little harder to find. But, you know, you can find those things for 15 to 25 bucks all day freaking long. Yeah, but CZ also set up Checkpoint USA, and they're bringing them in now. Back when you were getting your parts kits, a VZ-58 parts kit and gun, that thing was as rare as a moon rock in the U.S., yeah, it was, but mags still weren't two hundred bucks a piece for them, though. No, I mean that was you know back then a hundred, two hundred bucks would have been like seventy five bucks back then too. Um, so you know, it, you know, it is what it is. That's where we're at. Um, so range update, the Valme, you know, that's kind of you know where we're at. Donald Trump is in Twitter fights with ungrateful shoplifters in China. <laughs> <laughs> I just, <laughs> it's like, like uh, I know, I just, you know, Robert Mugabe has resigned for as being, uh, you know, from leading Rhodesia, I mean, Zimbabwe. Dude, I love Robert Mugabe. I just, I just, you know, <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, just, uh, I saw, like, he wears, like, all these crazy clothes and these outfits. Like, he wore, like, this jumpsuit at a formal function and it was like, you know, it was like yellow as a base color. And it had like probably a hundred, you know, maybe 75, uh, uh, like photo quality prints of his head all over his jumpsuit of his face. Yeah, dude. But dude, you got to love that. I do. I mean, he is literally, you look up, you look up in a, in a, you look up in a dictionary, uh, uh, you know, definition of car, of cartoon African, despot dictator <laughs> and literally you will see a picture of him i mean he's the guy and it's yeah you know it's it's you know it's an interesting place i know quite a bit about about that area and it's you know it's the last of the one of the last of the great communist fucking shitholes because you know it's this weird like wait till the people in the see, people don't realize this like like you know Z zimbabwe 
there were two factions, like when during the, the, the after the takeover, but you know during the Bush Wars, there was a there was a Russian Soviet client faction. Then Robert Mugabe's faction was actually a Maoist, so they almost like Stalinist, Marxist Stalinist faction, and then Mugabe was the Maoist, the Maoist communist faction. So there was two separate communist groups that were fighting, you know, everybody else, and then they end up coming together, and their like combined name is like A B C D E F G dash forty one twenty one. I mean it's just this crazy people's whatever, whatever. And like people when they find out like what happened in Zimbabwe after this guy took over, like the North Koreans came into Zimbabwe and killed thousands of people. That they don't this is after the Bush Wars. This is in the eighties yeah. and nineties. I mean, dude, they're still fine. I mean, you know why do you know why do you know why the military like kind of stepped in and like put him under house arrest and stopped him from putting his his wife, his little his little chicky wife in as the leader and they this other they they kind of the crocodiles, the new guy who's anointed, he was the former vice president, but he was sacked and so so he they could so Mugabe could put his wife in. The reason the military came in and was like, "We want the crocodile guy to be the leader," is because they are all scared shitless that if the government actually changes and it becomes a more open society, they're going to discover all of them all the old mine shafts that have hundreds and hundreds of bodies in them from like the nineties. I mean, they're going to be these people are going to be brought up. You know, for the uh, the ICC, the International Criminal oh, Court, yeah. and stuff. That's what this is about. <clears throat> and see, nobody in the West is reporting any of this. This is so. There's so much corruption, but the, they don't want the accountability of some of this stuff. You know, Slobodan Milosevic. I think one of these generals just got life in prison in the ICC for the shit they were doing in the 90s. Well, these these army guys in Zimbabwe and what they did with the help from the North Koreans, it is crazy town. What they mm-hmm. did down there. It's fucking crazy town. And that's what's not getting reported. And it's just really interesting that, you know, China and North Korea and, you know, all these tensions and all these problems and, you know, North Korea is collapsing and, you know, that really hurts Zimbabwe. And I mean, it's just, it's just a shit show. Now, I was, I literally, I was out cutting. I came back last night and I was like, oh my God, Mugabe resigned. Cause I knew he was under house arrest. And I was just like, holy shit. I was like the last person to know it. Which, you know, is interesting because usually when uh, when African uh, dictators resign, uh, they 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 resign because of the bullet in their head. They, are, <laughs> are you saying they they resign in front of the brick wall? Let me stand in front of the brick <laughs> exactly. wall and tender my resignation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Speaking of which. Uh, I want to give my two weeks notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, that's the problem in China, too. See, people, you know, China's not China's kind of like a giant communist corporation it's not really a it's not a capitalist country it's kind of a communist country but it's a communist country where you know and see that's the thing like like mugabe like zimbabwe is a communist country people don't want to admit it's dysfunctional like they're on the dollar they gave up their currency but like you see like it's bizarre dude they've got like you know like any any group like let's say I don't know. We took a bunch of our loser friends and we all decided to be losers and live on, the, you know, live in huts on the farm. You know, eventually one of the losers would be like the chief loser. You know what I mean? There's always a stratification. And see, in all these communist paradises, it never fails that you get these the crocodile and Mugabe and Mugabe's wife and then their kids. And they're all driving around in like Rolls Royce phantoms and Rolex watches like it's I mean. There's a couple girls that are in Z- out in Zimbabwe. They're known as the Zimbabwean Kardashians. I mean, no, seriously. Like they're. Wow. In- I mean, no, seriously. Get on Instagram, type in Zimbabwe, and see some of the like most followed people in Zimbabwe, and you are going to think that you're looking at fucking like the whole Paris Hilton family. It's unbelievable, dude. They look like fucking rappers. 
This isn't a joke. Really? I'm not kidding. Like every fucking photograph is these guys in front of like Maybox and McLarens and Phantoms and Lambos, and they literally look like it. Literally looks like a still photograph. Like there'd be like thirty of these guys. They're all kids. So, so basically, it's a Snoop Dogg video. Dude, it is. I mean, it's the, and that country is so fucking broke. They all have like, like solid gold rolex watches with diamonds and like they're they're buying bottles of like 500 dollars champagne and pouring it over their watches in the clubs i mean just it's like crazy town zimbabwe is crazy town it's like how do these people get all this money because they steal mm. it they don't have jobs yeah you know i mean it's like you know and it's just these you know and i always think of like bernie sanders and with all these stupid kids what do you think's going to happen if like Bernie Sanders becomes president, you know, it takes over the country or you socialist. Dream. Oh man, it, it's the Russian, it's the Russian mafia all over. Oh again. yeah, it's like you know, how do all these, how do all these communists all of a sudden become billionaires? Uh huh. It's like you know, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just funny, you know. You know, Donald Trump, they all hate Donald Trump because he's a billionaire, but it's okay if their communist buddies can become billionaires. But Donald Trump made his fucking money. He didn't steal it. <laughs> well, see, they don't want to. They don't want to admit that their uh, their their communist uh, icons will become billionaires. Uh, they don't. They don't want to admit that. Yeah. Oh, dude, I've been. No, Bernie I, Sanders isn't isn't a millionaire. Oh, he's the only common man in 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 Congress. He's the only Congress guy who's not uh, not a multimillionaire. Eh, wrong. <laughs> did you? Did you? Did you see the latest? I guess now they're like I guess like all these leftists are coming out like talking about like you know they were raped or they were oh this. dude the, the, look the leftists are eating each other <laughs> it, it it it's it's like it's it's like a wild animal eating her cubs huh? because all this all this craziness you know. Oh, Donald Trump's misogynist. Donald Trump, Russia. Donald Trump, Russia. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what? What? It, what? You know? Yeah. When when it all fell apart, now they're turning on each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a glorious, glorious thing to watch. It really is. Um, here's the thing. Everyone's like, "Oh, Donald Trump needs to put the Twitter down." No, Donald Trump needs to just be banned off Twitter. Donald Trump, he needs to quit doing that Twitter stuff. He's just fucking killing himself, dude. Every goddamn liberal in Hollywood needs to take that fucking advice for themselves because Twitter is killing them. Donald Trump is win Donald Trump wins Twitter every day. And let me give you. Oh, he, let me give yeah, you, he does. Let me give you two examples: one from recent history and one from ancient history, uh, aka twenty. 16, and let me tell you what it is. I have to look the one guy's name up, but I can see his face. So Donald Trump, so North Korea, they come out with a statement, and they, or maybe maybe it's Kim Il, you know, whatever, little Kim, whatever his name is. He comes out, and he calls Trump, like, old and whatever. Like, they said something shitty about Trump. And, you know, they found, like, an old, whatever, you know, washed up old guy, needs to give it up, retire. And so Trump gets on Twitter and this is where I love this is where I love Trump. He goes he goes on Twitter and he says I'm paraphrasing, I don't know the exact tweet, but he goes I don't know why they would call me old and I don't know why little Kim would call me a rocket man would call he calls him rocket man would call me old and something else. I never called I never called him short and fat. <laughs> you know, and it's just yeah. like oh fuck. And then okay, now here's the here's the next one. During the 2016 primary season, Donald Trump got into a Twitter argument with a Saudi prince. Um, Sheikh, I, don't, I can see the guy's name. I'm not going to type it on the keyboard to look for it. But this guy, let me tell you this guy's reputation. He is considered one of the wealthiest actual people in Saudi Arabia or in the world. He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a prince. That was known as being this kind of like not moderate, more modernist, maybe like he was involved in a lot of businesses. He owns like he's a big shareholder in Apple. He's a big shareholder in, you know, maybe Uber and IBM. And he's a business like you'll see him a lot of times. He'll be wearing a suit and then his headdress. Yeah. Very interesting guy. And he's. I don't know his age. I don't know. He might be in his late 50s. Yeah, he could he could be in his 60s. I'm not sure. But he's a he's a well known 
entity around the world because he's a he's a he's not like some dumb hill jack that you know just has a bunch of money he's in it he's a he's an accomplished sophisticated investor he got into a major shit storm with donald trump during the primaries because he was attacking donald trump and saying donald trump will never be president and donald trump this and donald trump that and donald trump it was like, yeah, you're a loser, you're this, your country's whatever, you know. They got and people were like, Oh my god, Trump, you know, he can't even get have his allies, you know, he's at war with Saudi Arabia and like it was it was a story for about ten days a year ago. Okay, yeah. over a year ago. And everyone now listening to this has forgotten about it. Prince Moneybags is one of the people that was scooped up in the purge last week it is now currently being imprisoned in the Riyadh Ritz Carlton Hotel and <laughs> they have taken all of his money they have frozen all of his assets and he's one of the people that's been arrested under the guise of a of a corruption investigation but what it is it's the uh the Saudi prince or crown prince who's a young guy he's going to end up being king Either this week or next week, he's going to be the official king. His father's going to, and so it's a power grab. But this guy, this guy's done. This guy, this guy that you know, one of the biggest, most powerful, whatever people in the world. He's literally he's 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 a prisoner in a hotel right now, and he has no money. He's over. And here's the really interesting thing: Jared Kushner, uh, Donald Trump's son-in-law, was in Saudi Arabia like eleven days. Before this big purge happened, and they supposedly yeah. had like a big powwow in Saudi Arabia, and it's even made apparently General Kelly a little nervous, uh, who's the current chief of staff, because he says it almost looks uh, optically it looks like we were coordinating with the Saudis and we were you know in on the purge, and you know of all these of all these princes and all these royals, and you know maybe we did, maybe we didn't. But yeah, it's knows. it's it's you know if you're if you're if you're a, 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 a kind of this you know like if you're a hillbilly that lives in the Middle East and you think everything is a plot by the CIA, it's I I look this may not be true but I'm not going to discourage people that hate America from thinking Donald Trump just took out this prince <laughs> just because because right. I'm sure Donald Trump had nothing to do with it but. You know what? Just for the sake of like America first and fuck you guys. Yeah, you know what? Donald Trump took out Mr. Moneybags. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. it's really interesting what's going on in Saudi Arabia right now. <laughs> and there's yeah. actually grumblings that, um, that, uh, um, that, you know, Saudi Arabia is going to launch military attacks against Lebanon in coordination with Israel to push uh, push the uh, Iranians out of Lebanon. There's there's a war coming. There's a big war coming. Um and there's a lot going on. So with that and yeah, I, I you know we watch it closely, but I know most of the listeners don't really give a shit about it. So <coughs> Nah, that's okay. We'll report on it. Yeah, we report on it. Why well, can you want to hear you want to hear a fun interesting fact regarding presidential security that most of our listeners would like that I can um uh, that I can connect to this story. The current prime minister of of uh, or whatever he is of of Lebanon. His last name is Hariri, and um, he was he was on a on a on a diplomatic mission trip to Saudi Arabia. Like, hey, I'm here representing Lebanon. I'm here to meet the king, and yeah. they wouldn't let him leave. Uh, and they, <laughs> they, and they told him that you're resigning. And apparently, he's rescinded. The re- he came. He literally was in Saudi Arabia. Got on TV and said, "I'm going to resign." Which it's and that's when all this purging started a couple of weeks ago, and it's really the timing, and it all has to do with Iran and all that. But here's the interesting story for if you ever see uh, ever see Donald Trump or you know Bill Clinton or B- George W. Bush, but like Trump and like you, you know J- uh, uh, Barack Obama, and you see their big armored Cadillacs, and you see like all of the security around them. Yeah, there was an incident that happened in Lebanon. Some years ago, the f- prime minister at the time was named Rafiq Hariri. This man's father, the current guy, I don't know if he's prime minister or whatever, but um, so it's a Hariri guy. And and he the theory was at the time that Hariri, he was killed in a car bomb attack. Um, and, you know, it, it killed like a bunch of his security detail. But what made, what made it interesting 
is this particular car bomb attack actually they don't talk about it in security circles but it for like presidential protective detail this was their 911 because here's what they did and i think it was the syrians that did it but you know whatever cuz client state syria and lebanon and all this for those that are interested his convoy was coming down this road and they didn't they didn't plant a bomb like in a manhole they didn't plant a bomb in a car next to his convoy they literally wired the whole street damn they blew up the whole goddamn block it's a miracle they didn't kill a thousand people i mean this bomb was so big and it was in you know and, and what happened was when that happened it really made all of the western major military powers reevaluate what it would take to do a decapitation strike on civilian command and control. And that event, Hariri's father, the killing of him was like a, like, oh my God. I mean, how do you defend? I mean, how do you, the, that, that is something that the Secret Service still studies to this day. They just won't ever admit it publicly. That, and so that's kind of, you know, this is the universe when you're talking about Lebanon and Saudi Arabia and Iran and, you know, Hariri's. This is the universe that we're in right now. And, you know, like the Donald Trump, Mr. Moneybag, Sheik and all that. So it's, you know, you know, I just just an interesting topic I wanted to segue to go into that I know you're about ready to you know, hang yourself. So I'll get off of it. Um, T-91 update. Yeah. I, ha- I haven't opened the box, the T-91 bill project. I have. I've, I've just been so busy. I haven't a chance to open it. So, yeah. Um, do we want to go ahead and get the upper if we have the – I mean, where is the, um, where is the damn box? Is it I, – I, you know what? If I had it, I would open it now. I don't know where it's – I think it's in the truck. So – Well, um, here's the problem with the upper. Well, it's not a problem. I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's going to be – it's going to be a minute before we get the uh, the lower finished. I mean, this project's not going to be done in the next month or two. But on the other hand, I mean, these uppers are kind of hanging around at a pretty steady price. But I, my big fear is all of a sudden they're going to go up in price. Now, I mean, they're pretty pricey for an upper because you can buy uppers for about half of what they're wanting for one of these wolf uppers. But – it's not a T ninety one upper either. So, are they like six hundred bucks? Yeah, they're like six hundred bucks, and you can buy. I can I can buy three. I can, hell, I can buy three uppers for six hundred bucks, but they're just standard AR uppers, you know. See, I Wolf A one AR fifty. I'm looking at on my phone. Oh shit! They've come down in price. What are Atlantic? They? This item is in stock. Atlantic Firearms has them for four ninety nine. Ooh. Um. Oh, it might okay. be. It might be like. It might be like a Christmas thing. You know what? Then it at four ninety nine. That's like two hundred. That's fine. They were normally I, like five ninety nine. They were like five ninety nine. Yeah. Um. Honestly, that's like a hundred bucks off than what they were a month ago. And that's going to put pressure on everybody else too. That's interesting. I wonder so, if that's if they're going to do like a Black Friday and announce that. I don't know. You know what? This might be a time to buy buy the upper. Because look, <clears throat> let's face it. The truth is, these uppers aren't really blowing off the shelf. They're it's, not. They're, they're six hundred bucks for for an AR upper, and I mean they are what they are. And if you're building a T ninety one, you you have to have it, but. But guys that are building ARs, it's like, well, if I'm going to spend 600 bucks on an upper, I'm going to do a custom upper and build it exactly the way I want. And that's what you should do if you're going to spend that kind of money. Atlantic Firearms has a has a detailed breakdown of this upper. They've got photographs of it. And just, again, I'm not the biggest AR expert in the world, but just looking at the pictures, the bolt carrier is custom – like actually, like it looks real similar to an AR-15 bolt and bolt carrier, but the gas key looks like it's just a nub that the piston hits. So they've got that out, and then they've got the hand guards off, the piston system showing. Here's here's my here's my thing on these T-91s. 
<coughs> Look, they they're not they're not blowing off the shelf. People bought them that want them, and then they're not yeah. selling. And eventually, they'll end up you know blowing them out or being at CDNN or whatever. But then Wolf's never going to bring any more in. Well, and and that's the thing; they'll eventually dry up because it's not like they brought you know a a, a million of them in. I'm going to have to look at this then. Spend, I'm God, I'm just spending so much goddamn money right now. I know. Between stuff for the for the range and then the, you know, I bought the stupid Valme goddamn gun and $250 for fucking magazine. <laughs> hey, but you know what? In my defense, the Valme is not the most expensive magazine I've ever bought. <laughs> so that still is that record is still held by a Blazer R8. Uh, yeah, I was this, just going to say you still shoot Blazers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, with um, with a uh, uh, with a with the Blazer R8 with the magazine and trigger being all one unit, they're seven hundred dollar magazines. <laughs> so, but they come with a trigger. So, all right, that's you know, I'm glad I looked at this because you know what will happen? They're going to send out. I this has to be a Black Friday sale. And they just have they just updated it early. This will probably they'll send a newsletter out probably tomorrow night or tonight or and uh Yeah. And you know what? Then these will be gone at four ninety nine. Yeah. All right. Who yeah, else has I mean, I, I I hate to say it, but <sighs> Yeah. Who's um does AIM have them? Aim surplus? I, I think they're sold out. I could be wrong on that. I mean, I know they. I know at one point in time they had them. Let's do a quick search on Aim. Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's uh, find, let's they find got them. them. They've got them. Four ninety nine from them too. Oh, fuck okay. Me. Well, we'll buy them. We'll, we'll buy them from Aim. We'll get them from we Aim. Them from. Yeah. No real sight included. You know? Muzzle brake style may vary. Well, fuck me, dude. Well. They'll send out a newsletter. You know, here's the thing. AIM, they always send out a newsletter on Fridays. Yeah. Their Friday weekend sale. This will be, how much, we're going to do a bet now. This will be in the newsletter, and by freaking Monday, they'll be out of stock. Oh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. All right. I'm glad, I'm glad we talked about it now on air so we can hear all our problems. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, look, I mean, I, oh man, I hate to go there with it, but you know, it, it four ninety nine though, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, for, I mean, again, you know, I mean, it, you know, you can get uppers cheap all day. Um, oh yeah. But, but look, but, the, but the thing is for, for the T91, you just can't put any upper on it. Well, I mean, you can, but it won't be, a, it won't be right, you yeah. know? Um, and, and I mean, geez, I mean, you know, I mean, you get the charging handle, the, the bulk carrier group. I mean, but it's, it's complete. It's complete. And, I think the T91 nerds, you know, I think there might be like an issue with like the front sight gas block on this one might not totally match what's in Taiwan, so... Uh, you know what? Look, here's the thing. I know. I'm not dealing with that. The, the thing is, you're cobbling together a T91. I mean, you know, the the, the truth is, um, you're buying an 80% T91 receiver that's just something someone molded up in their fucking backyard kiln. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. Um you know, I mean, the thing is, this is a cobbled together T91. It's not going to be a real, true T91, but it's going to be the closest thing you can get. Oh, yeah, and it's it's manufactured by the same company that makes the T91, so I'm not worried about the gas block. It's not yeah. that big of a deal. It matches. Yeah. It's close enough. I mean, yeah. do, do you ever pick up a gun and go, ooh, that gas block makes me feel sexy? You know, it's uh, like, come uh, on. Actually, now that you mention it, yeah, I kind of do. But, yeah, so. you know, but, you know. That's me. Hey, did you hear huh. Donald Trump lifted the ban on bringing elephant trophies into the U.S.? No, I didn't hear that. Yeah. But you know what? You know what? It's funny you mention that. I was um, online the other day, and <sighs> what the hell was it? It was... 
was it the cougar hunting or whatever in like Arizona? No, 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 no. This was uh, it was it was a uh, a British news source, you know, a UK news source that I that I follow because you know they're they're liberal fucking lunatics over there in the goddamn uh, fucking limey capital of the world. Um, <laughs> and I like to just keep my you know my fingers in the in on on their their fucking crazy train. <laughs> and and they were talking about something about big game hunting, you know, and and of course it's the it's the typical big game big game hunting argument about, you know, oh, you know, trophy hunting and all that shit. And they were talking about how, you know, trophy I don't remember the background of the basis of the article, but you know, basically trophy hunting is bad and Anyone that trophy hunts is fucking evil. And of course, none of them had the, know anything about fucking hunting. But, you know, um, you know, and you get all these fucking wing nuts rolling in, you know, it's like, you know, one guy, the, 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 the thing, the comment that sticks out in my mind, cause I actually commented on it is, he's like, you don't see anyone over in Africa eating leopard steaks, do ya? And I, <laughs> I, 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 I chimed in and I said, I said, well, actually, I said, if you, you know, if you want to actually exert yourself and get off your lazy chair and do a very simple Google search, um, yeah, African tribes do eat leopard. I said, now, in all fairness to your comment, do they eat leopard steaks? I'm not sure if the villagers in Africa really know how to do a good steak cut. But they do eat leopard, whether it's leopard steak or not, can't say. But yeah, they're eating the leopard meat. Here's the thing, like a lot of Westerners don't understand this. Of all the animals over there that are probably least liked, it's probably the leopard. Well, but because leopards are dicks. They I mean the leopards kill kill people. Like they They kill people. Yeah. They 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 have uh, more trouble with leopards than anything. What was the uh, the uh, African big game hunter movie that uh, the Vin Diesel, not Vin Diesel, who was the uh, Vin guy that was in uh, the Top Gun movie with uh, short short guy Cruz? Um, I have no idea what you're talking. Uh, about. They, anyway, they I don't know. Back in the '90s or something, they made a movie about uh, about leopards eating big game hunters. Is that the chapstick guy? Chapstick wrote the books. Guy chapstick guy i don't know that i don't know he there, was some capstick there was a famous guide or whatever that wrote all wrote all these books about um like hunting leopards and like big game hunting and safaris and all his adventures in africa his name was capstick or chapstick or something like that hey um I don't. do you want to know proof that big large bureaucratic organizations like the u.s military do have a sense of humor Sure. I mean, I, I know they have a sense of humor, but but let, let's hear your proof. So the first one is the U.S. Navy admits their pilots were responsible for an obscene skywriting stunt that outlined the shape of a penis. I love that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I thought actually I kind of thought that was pretty, uh, you know, it was a lot of work. I mean, it was like you think I about thought it, it. I thought it was I thought it was creative as hell. I thought it was creative as hell. And then, okay, you know how the uh, you know how the military is going, the army's going to the Sig P three twenty, and it's the Mark whatever. I don't know what they call it, um, yeah. and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Well, USMC designates the Glock nineteen M as the M double O seven. This is a true story. The USMC has officially adopted the Glock nineteen M which is basically their version of a Gen 5. That's what really created the Gen 5 was the M series of guns. And designated designated it the M007. The new concealed carry pistol was being issued to Marine Corps criminal investigators uh, first, so NCIS. Um, Concealable firearm replaced in the later M9 service pistol. The M double O M zero zero seven. The M double O seven has a smaller frame and easier to conceal, making a natural selection to meet the uh, the course concealed carry weapon requirement. Because I just thought that was really the double O seven. I mean, wh- 
where where was the double oh six? Was hmm. was double oh three killed dressed as a clown in East Germany? <laughs> See, no one knows James Bond movies, so they don't know what the hell I'm even talking about. You know, double oh seven. You know, you're here to avenge the death of double oh three. Whatever, so, it's I, the Marine Corps. I know, and it's just like okay, whatever. So that's about you know what that's about all I you know I've got now. So and we've gone over an hour here, so. We better go ahead and wrap this one up because you still probably have to get ready for Thanksgiving tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff I've uh, I've actually got to uh, get done. Um, okay, but you know, hey, whatever. Okay. Um. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and toss this one out. So, this wraps up episode <laughs> 79 of the John 1911 podcast. If you want to hear more about some of the things we're doing or that we're discussing. Uh, check out our blog page, john1911.com. It's J-O-H-N 1911.com. Special, uh, special thanks to our sound en- engineer, Mitch. And uh, remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. And everybody, have a good day. See you later. <laughs>